Good day, I'm Adrian Atkinson and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, July 17. The $300 million rare earth elements extraction pilot project being spearheaded by the Jamaica Bauxite Institute, JBI, and Japanese entity Nippon Light Metals is expected to commence soon. Science, Technology, Energy and Mining Minister Philip Paulworth says construction work began on the plant at the JBI in St. Andrew four months ago and is over 95% complete. He says all necessary equipment have been imported, paving the way for processing activities to get underway shortly. It involves the processing of the red mud byproduct from bauxite mining activities to extract rare earth elements which are vital in the manufacturing of numerous high-tech products. The firm's ultimate objective is to extract some 1,500 metric tons per annum. The results of the pilot project will be owned in equal parts by the JBI and Nippon Light Metals. Youth and Culture Minister Lisa Hanna strongly denounced a petition made by human rights lobby group Jamaicans for Justice, which calls for a stop to what it characterizes as a government's ill-treatment of juveniles in correctional facilities. Minister Hanna has labeled the petition as dishonest. Speaking at Wednesday's Jamaica House press briefing, she pointed to several actions being taken by the government to safeguard the nation's children. All juveniles have already been removed from the Horizon Remand Center. Two, all juvenile girls remanded by the court are to be removed from Fort Augusta Correctional Center by December 2013 and accommodated in their own facilities separate from adults. The government is developing a child diversion program under the Ministry of Justice to provide the justice system with options for rehabilitation other than incarceration for children who break the law. The minister also reiterated that government welcomes petitions and other interventions from civil society groups as a vital part of the democratic process, but cited the need for responsible dialogue that can truly correct the issues that exist. Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaite says a committee comprising members of civil society and the business sector will be established to ensure the optimal performance of the public education sector. He was speaking on Tuesday at the Jamaica Employers Federation CEO breakfast. If the education dollar is to be spent efficiently to ensure improved educational outcomes, civil society, groups such as yours, must play an increasingly avid role. Jamaica's much-anticipated Protected Areas System Master Plan, PASMP, is expected to be completed and presented to Cabinet within the next few months. Consultant in the Ministry of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change, Leonie Barnaby, made the announcement recently. She was addressing regional representatives at the opening of the Midterm Evaluation Workshop on the Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, CEPF's Caribbean Islands Biodiversity Hotspot Project. We really are looking forward to not adversarial um, contact, but a true understanding from all sides of how we can all work together for the one goal of protecting our environment. The CEPF Caribbean program runs for five years, 2013 to 2017, and is supporting 55 projects throughout the region, committing over five million US dollars. And finally, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller is affirming government support of its junior and national athletes following news of the adverse analytical findings found in the A samples of five Jamaican athletes who participated in the junior and senior trials at the National Stadium in June. In a statement to Parliament Tuesday, Mrs. Simpson-Miller urged Jamaicans to refrain at this time from making judgments and conclusions about what has been reported in the media. We stand by our athletes and value the significant contributions they make towards engendering national pride. Let us not be disheartened. Let us continue to allow the results management process to run its course. At the same time, the Prime Minister reiterated the importance of integrity in sport, fair play, and the maintenance of a doping-free sporting environment. To support its youngest and most senior athletes in this regard, the Prime Minister said the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission, JADCO, intended to ramp up the public education program at the high schools and commence sensitization programs at the primary school level. The JADCO website is also being updated to include a link to the World Anti-Doping Agency WADA prohibited list, which includes substances and methods that's prohibited in and out of competition. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching.